Hey folks, good morning, all of you. I think you are having a good day. Uh, so today I want to talk about data as a service platform. So this is Sukumar Bairi. Um, I'm with Nutanix for the last three years and we have built a platform called data as a service, which we are using to have the data accessed across the platforms, right? So we use this platform as um, a one-stop shop for data democratization. Um, and we have data coming across from different data sources. So today I want to talk about more on this platform and uh, uh, talk about the problem statement, why we have to go with this kind of a platform and what is the need of data lake hubs and what is the cluster architecture and uh, use case details that we want to discuss on. Yes. So uh, this is a data as a service platform, which we use as an internal data management platform. So um, we have built this platform so that most of the teams that have data across different data sources can join and have their data at a single place and build analytics on top of that, right? So this platform, it helped us in data provisioning, wherein we can have the data from wide varieties of data sources and integration of that data to different API, um, platforms or even the Python programming languages. And um, we are also using this platform for data management, wherein we have the data from different sources, which is the confidentiality of the data uh, varies between one, uh, wherein uh, one is the topmost confidential data and it goes up to five, level five, wherein we have some uh, regular public data. And this platform um, is integrated with um, RBAC system. So the access is controlled to role-based access, right? So uh, we usually have created all the spaces or the schemas to say on project basis. So uh, whenever a user is joined into a project, we can have that pro access to that space to that user so they don't need to go to somewhere else and get access to different data sources and this is highly scalable so we have built this system on top of a kubernetes nutanix kubernetes engine so we have uh, uh, the up scale up and scale down model integrated with that and coming to security so uh, as we are controlling the data authorization using our back we have the uh, LDAP integration uh, kind of Okta integration in our system. So uh, we have built a lot of Tableau dashboarding on top of this platform, uh, wherein we can get a lot of analytics and insights into different um, data models and use that for data-driven decisions. So what, uh, what is the first point that comes into our picture, uh, our mind when we are talking about this platform and why we have to go this with this kind of platform? So as we have uh, migrated from a small company as a startup to a company we are right now, we uh, started as a hardware company and then moved to a software company uh, to a subscription model right now. So the data models have been keep on changing. The data that flows into our systems keep on changing the application changes, there is a lot of schema changes, and we have to come up with a system where we can um, get a auto schema evaluation, kind of, which is supported by Iceberg right now. And um, we have data scattered across multiple data sources, right? So uh, um, as we have started as a company, there are multiple uh, teams, different teams, which have their own databases, um, which are running in silos. And we don't have connectivity uh, between those databases because we have something on MongoDB, let's say, and the other one in 
uh, a MySQL or PostgreSQL. So it's uh, difficult for us to join data between those two data sources. And um, uh, we, as a growing company, have to build some dashboards which are low latency. And uh, these are customer facing applications, right? So we thrive towards um, building a system which is low, which is which has a low latency and that doesn't impact uh, any of the uh, cluster activities, right? So the structure of data as on when there is a new uh, patch released for the software, um, the data model changes or the data structure changes. So we have to cope up with all those changes and probably we have to uh, redefine all the structure of the data or the tables and all the upstream and downstream applications depending on that data source. So why do we need uh, data aggregation uh, between these data sources? Right? So um, we have um, data, let's say like we got some finance or accounts data in some system uh, and uh, the logs or the pulse data of those systems into in different data sources. So that is the main reason why we want to have a data aggregation to build a data-driven uh, analytics or decision on top of that. So this gives us uh, improved decision making with better insights and it also increases accuracy of our data-driven decisions so that we can plan our uh, future activities accordingly. So here is a, a diagram uh, which um, actually is funneling data from different data sources. And we have created a physical data uh, sources which we call as PDS on top of Dremio. So these PDS, we are restricting access to PDS uh, in Dremio, and then we create the virtual data sets we call as VDSs. And uh, on top of that, we are creating a business logic, right? So all the users uh, or all the uh, entities have been created in spaces at project level. So all those who require access to that uh, particular data sources will be granted access to that space. So uh, we are using this uh, platform for the last mile uh, of the data, uh, uh, data pipeline. So uh, we have a system which is highly performant when we are talking about uh, millisecond or second uh, latency dashboard. So we have integrated these systems with uh, multiple business integration tools like Tableau, uh, Power BI, and also we are uh, having endpoint that can be used in different Python applications. So, so again, uh, when we are talking about why we want a data lake house, uh, we have systems like the RDBMS in MySQL or PostgreSQL or even um, AWS RDS instances, as well as we have data on AWS S3 or Nutanix objects, right? So uh, this data, uh, it might be application specific data or application logs or um, some pulse data, which has to be uh, integrated uh, and we have to uh, uh, drive some decision out of that data, right? So we have to write a logic which can go through all these data sources and then uh, come up with a target table. So because of these uh, kind of heterogeneous sources, we have to go with a platform which helps us as a data lake house. Um, and the volume variety and velocity of data that we get on a daily basis, they're also being supported by this platform. Um, coming to data governance, um, uh, as we are managing uh, all the data access on one system, it is easy for us to manage uh, the data access to different data sources. So uh, this is a diagram that uh, gives us an overview of how we have built this system. So uh, towards the left are all those data sources. Uh, uh, they are not limited to this, uh, which is in the diagram, but uh, just for overview, we have these many data sources on the left which is connecting to our DAS platform. So we have built on the, the system on Kubernetes, Nutanix Kubernetes engine. 
and we have integrated that with uh, Nutanix object storage. So um, we have all the data that um, needs to be uh, stored in objects as iceberg tables so that we have a pipeline where we can um, use this highly performant Apache iceberg tables and query on top of that using Remy. So this system, we are connecting to the system from different APIs. Again, we are using um, object storage, Nutanix object storage as a storage solution for us for uh, different use cases, as well as we are connecting uh, from Tableau and different uh, business integration tools to that. Right. And this is an overview of architecture, how we did. So towards the left is a kind of use cases that we um, deal with on a daily basis. So we got telemetry data, we got accounts data, support data. And uh, to say we got the telemetry data on S3, accounts data in PostgreSQL and support data in MongoDB. So uh, having all these data sources in different places, uh, we have to come up with a solution, uh, which is the DAS platform, which is built with on top of uh, uh, Kubernetes engine uh, with Dremio. And this platform, we are providing that to the users on the tool. So towards the right is um, the actual system that we have built. So it's a five node cluster uh, with uh, Dremio coordinator and availability set up in place. So uh, we have all these data sources that are uh, input data sources and towards the right are the data sources that are output sources. So uh, coming to the use case, uh, I would like to talk about a use case that we have um, uh, in our environment, which we have uh, provided a solution with this platform. So uh, we have uh, enterprise Jira data. So what we have in this data is like uh, data from different projects uh, in our company, which deals with multiple projects, uh, sub projects, um, uh, develop a productivity activity so that uh, managers can plan um, the workload among their developers and um, a single source of truth for Jira data so that uh, the management can go check on the process and the progress of different projects. Right? So if something is not going through, then that's the place where we can go and check what's happening and uh, go help the team or uh, provide more resources to the team or probably uh, plan that management. And the problem statement uh, here is, we have to query large data sets on production database. Uh, this uh, actually hinders the performance on the production database when we are doing a recursive query on a large data set, right? So we have to have uh, this load moved to a different system so that production applications are not impacted when we are trying to um, do a recursive kind of query. And the complex query logic with hierarchical queries, uh, it works very fine when the system load on the database is nominal, but when it's um, uh, a quarter end or a peak uh, hour of the day, the query uh, runs longer and it would impact the dashboard refreshes. Um, and we have to uh, have an option of uh, refreshing the backend tables on demand, which is not possible uh, uh, on a on a regular RDBMS kind of thing. Right. So uh, yeah, and the last one is like low, low latency dashboard refreshes, which uh, helps us to uh, get the latest data being visualized onto the dashboards. And the solution that we come up came up with is uh, having um, the base table, which is used as uh, as a main table for that data set um, to be migrated to a, a Apache iceberg format in object Nutanix object storage. 
right? So what we did is we have created uh, a batch iceberg table in Nutanix object store for that large data set, which is acting as a main table. So to give an overview of this table, so it is a view or a table that is built on top of like 17 other tables. So we are getting data from different data sources uh, and probably it can be a, a 20 plus million records table, right? So this 20 plus million record table has to be uh, joined with other tables, other five to six tables, which are in like six to seven, eight million records table. And we have to go uh, uh, with a records query so that we can pull all the records that is required by different attributes. So when we are running this type of queries on a database, it is impacting the performance of the database or uh, even the query fails with some uh, memory issues. Right? So um, we have to, uh, we have created a pipeline uh, to incrementally update these tables on a scheduled frequency on Apache Iceberg as it is also supporting the current operations. So um, we have uh, created uh, business logics on these data sets as different VDSs and we have enabled reflections. So when we are enabling reflections, we have integrated our system to have the distributed data store on Nutanix objects, which is um, on-prem. So that is uh, other uh, requirement for us where we have to put in all our confidential data on prem. So we have to search for an option where we can get a distributed kind of storage on prem uh, instead of uh, going to a public public cloud storages. So uh, we have integrated uh, the system with uh, Nutanix object storage, which is an on prem solution uh, for distributed data store. And uh, we have enabled all the reflections on the business, business logic VDSs. Uh, we have also built some. Um, APIs that are scheduled on a frequency and uh, those are event driven. So even though that is scheduled on a frequency, it will check on the backend tables for some conditions. And if they are good, then only we will be refreshing the APIs. And all the downstream um, uh, reflections that are dependent on the master table or the base table, they will be also refreshed. So, um, we have built the Tableau dashboards, which connects to this business logic uh, VDSs. And uh, as uh, they are very low latent um, in uh, transferring all the uh, data over the bandwidth, network bandwidth, uh, the refreshes are pretty uh, fast. So, so what is the achievement for us using this uh, kind of model is uh, we, are able to query these large data sets even with hierarchical or recursive kind of query uh, and get the data back in millisecond, right? So when we have moved this kind of large data set um, uh, to a Apache iceberg format, um, and which is also residing on a Nutanix object store, it became a local table to the system. So we were able to query it um, and get the results, even like the results, which is uh, uh, a join between a 20 million plus 20 million table, we are getting that result back in like millisecond or at least a second, right? Uh, so we have shifted all the um, high compute workloads out of our production um, uh, DB uh, to our DAS platform. So uh, this way we have not only um, achieved this use case as a success, but also we have helped uh, all the other applications which are running on the uh, production database with their, uh, with uh, freeing up a lot of resources on the system. Um, and we have opened up the access to the users where they can rephrase the um, uh, reflections on demand. So whenever um, there is an ad hoc request or ad hoc um, data load to the base tables or the uh, dependent tables, then we can, uh, user can directly log in and they can refresh the reflection or they can call the API, which is also integrated with Airflow. Um, um, and then uh, the last one is the data refreshes. Uh, 
by reflection refresh. So uh, whenever we are uh, calling this API, which is scheduled, uh, whenever it touches the base table, it also refreshes all the uh, reflections that are dependent on this base table. So uh, this use case, we were able to uh, demonstrate the uh, ability of Dremio as a DAS service, as well as um, we were able to uh, leverage the performance benefits from Apache as performance table uh, using, which is which is uh, using uh, Nutanix Object Store as a data source in the backend. Yep. So um, this is all that we wanted to present today.